Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Full Court Press. I am your host, Drew Duncan. Do not forget that Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram is all at DrewDuncan83. Additionally, you can find me on YouTube. Simply look for Drew Duncan. And, of course, the Full Court Press is available on all social media as well. And don't forget that you can listen to the Full Court Press wherever you listen to podcasts via iHeartRadio, Spreaker, Spotify, etc. 32 teams, 32 days in the NFL. The focus right now is the Atlanta Falcons. The Atlanta Falcons are one of those teams that I've talked about that are very hit and miss, right? One year they'll win 12 games, the next year they'll win seven games. What Atlanta Falcons football team are we going to get this year? Look, I I think that New Orleans in their division is the clear-cut favorite. Um, Cam Newton and the Carolina Panthers are another football team that I would deem as one of those hit and miss football teams. I think for Jameis Winston and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, uh, especially for Jameis, as I've already pointed out, this is kind of a make or break season for him. Uh, and then of course you have Matt Ryan and the Atlanta Falcons, who by the way, had the sixth best overall offense in the NFL last year, but the 28th ranked defense overall in the NFL a season ago. And I think offensively, we know what they're going to do, right? Julio Jones, Matt Ryan, Sanu Muhammad, Devontae Freeman. I mean, you have a stacked offense. Defensively, though, when your best player is a cornerback and Desmond Trufant, you're looking at trouble. If you can't stop the run, you've only got one guy who can really do anything with the pass. And even then with Desmond Trufant, I'm not taking anything away from him. But let's be honest, he's not exactly a shut down one side of the field type defensive back. He's a good defensive back, but I don't know if I would call him great. I would call him good. The linebacking core, et cetera. I mean, it just there are a multitude of problems with this football team. And I don't think anybody's seen anything preseason wise that would allow them to suspect anything different from Atlanta. Then, of course, when you look at their schedule out of the division, they've got the Titans, the Rams, the Arizona Cardinals, who I noted specifically because I think offensively, Arizona is going to be a good football team this year. I don't think defensively they will, and I don't think anybody really expects anything overall from Arizona. And as I pointed out, they'll probably win a game over somebody like in Atlanta or maybe win one game uh, against an L.A. Rams or some, you know, something to that effect. Of course, we don't know how good L.A. is going to be, to be perfectly honest with you, this year. I mean, I look at Todd Gurley, and I've said before, as he goes, that offense goes. But I still think that this team will be tested because you're going to be going up against a premier defense in the Rams. And then offensively, if Todd Gurley is healthy and able to play, then it's going to be a a spot where they can look and go, okay, we we stopped a prolific offense. We stopped a prolific player in Todd Gurley. Now we can move forward defensively and be a, at least a medium football team defensively, right? I, I think if they at least had a decent defense, they would win 11 games every single year because they run up the score. But if you score 35 and the opponent scores 40, I know the name of the game is score more than the other guy. But at some point, you've got to make some stops. You have to. And I think for me, to be honest with you, it's terrible right now because whenever we talk about the Atlanta Falcons, what is the first thing that comes up, right? That Super Bowl. You're up 28-3. to I, I just, you know, if Matt Ryan continues to go the way that he does and he retires in the NFL... It will it be fair that the only way we'll ever think about him is that twenty eight to three debacle? I don't think so. Look, getting back to a Super Bowl is not as easy as the New England Patriots make it look, guys. They've been to what, nine Super Bowls in the last nineteen years? It's not as easy as they make it seem. And I know that people are going to go, well, the scandals anyways, and yada, yada, yada. And, that, you know, that's fine. I, I can live with all that. Um, but for me, the bottom line is, is 
let's say none of that existed, they would still make it look easier as it is. Let's say we never knew about those things. They would still be making it look easier than it is. And the old saying is cheaters never win. Well, at least the Patriots do a good job of winning. Technically, when you look at it, my team, the Denver Broncos, has cheated more times than any other team in the NFL. So, uh, you know, it is what it is. You know, Eric Dickerson will tell you if you're not cheating, you're not trying. I don't necessarily agree with all that, but the point of the matter is is that regardless of how you feel about the New England Patriots, getting there as often as they have is not as easy as they make it look. Will the Falcons be a football team to get back to the Super Bowl? This season, you know, I don't know. I don't I don't think so. But I will say this, I think the NFC as a conference is much more wide open this year than it's been in a very long time. I think the the transition now is shifting over to the AFC, right? Between the Chiefs and the Browns and the Steelers and the Patriots and all those teams over there, the Ravens. You're looking at a different scenario than we are right now in the NFC. Why? Because we don't know if Aaron Rodgers is going to be healthy for an entire season. We don't know what we're going to get out of Cam Newton and the Carolina Panthers. We don't know what's going to happen with the fact that Nick Foles is no longer in Philadelphia and guided that team to a Super Bowl. And then when they weren't looking that good last season, got them back to a playoff. We don't know if Carson Wentz is going to stay healthy with the Philadelphia Eagles. The Vikings, how are they going to look this season? Are the Bears good enough to have back-to-back 12-4 and four years with Mitchell Trubisky and Khalil Mack and company? The NFC, to me, is wide open. But the notable games, again, in the NFC, though, are the Rams, are the Seahawks. They will have to face Jacksonville. And we don't know what version of Nick Foles Jacksonville is going to be, right? Or what version of Nick Foles we'll see in Jacksonville. Because when he was with the Rams, eh, he got numbers. Look, the point is this. Atlanta is a team that is not as good consistently in terms of wins and being in playoff games and being in meaningful, deep playoff games. I'm talking NFC championships every single season the way that they should be with this offensive core. Period defensively, they're going to have to step their game up. Whether it's a new scheme, whether it's better game-to-game game planning, whether it's making adjustments in-game, whether it's you know figuring out ways to dominate the line of scrimmage and, and utilizing players in a way that's almost like a money ball aspect. Right? I can just get the most out of the next guy by using this guy at this amount of pay rate. I mean, we'll see with Atlanta this year. I'm not really sold on them winning 10 or 11 games, um, even though they should every single season. And I think that we're all in agreement that the Saints, it's still their division to win. Period. Guys, I am Drew Duncan, host of the Full Court Press. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram is all at Drew Duncan 83. Additionally, you can find me on YouTube. Simply look for Drew Duncan. And, of course, the Full Court Press is on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as well. And, again, you can listen to us wherever you listen to podcasts. And, as always, don't you dare touch that dial.